new technology and the music it creates. Um, first, I have to be more precise which technology I mean. And this is the cheap, democratic, mass-produced and distributed technology in the domain of the digital. Um, over the last um, 10 or 15 years, a lot has happened there, and I would like to show how this, for me as an artist, had um, consequences. So, of course, it's a subjective point of view, but maybe some aspects are also a bit representative for this um, generation of digital natives. And please excuse my faulty English. Um, which technology occurred over the last um, 10 or 15 years? There are very fast processors, um, big hard disks, mobile devices, audio interfaces, open source hardware with uh, the help of the Arduino board, or commercial controllers like joysticks, the Wii or the Kinect, open source software like Ubuntu, DSP software like um, PD, um, or Maximus P, or simply the um, MP3 codec. Uh, I'm not talking only about uh, nerdy stuff. Then fast um, internet connections, um, the streaming possibilities, video platforms like YouTube, um, P2P services like Napster, um, the blogosphere and social networks like Facebook. So um, it's a big difference to the world 15 years ago, I think. So imagine a world without uh, the web, without email, without mobile phones. Um, I've chosen four points um, uh, where I want to focus on uh, how t new technology had consequences in music. The first is um, software, so the area of producing music. Then the availability of already existing music, so that's remixing music. Then the um, existence of control devices, that's the area of playing music, and um, the platforms and social networks for distributing music. Okay, the first point is software. This is um, pretty clear that nowadays we have on the laptops uh, possibilities to do things that um, before could only be possible in very expensive studios. We've already forgotten all these devices or we already uh, never got in touch with them. Um, and, of course, there is then software, or the open source software, which is highly professional, but um, it's for free, and you can extend it on your own. Um, like Pure Data, which I prefer, and, and there's also a um, tutorial for free on the internet um, for pdtutorial.com, or also available as a book, if I can make this small advertising. Uh, I wrote it. Um, so that's all available for free, I want to say. Um, and you can, but you can do really the most professional stuff with it. Um, and the great thing about this kind of software is that it is so low level that there is no max MSP sound or, or PD sound. Um, it is software to create your own software, I would say. Um, that's what I did, for example, uh, where I combined several things. These are not completely new things, but um, for me it was a handsome thing to, to combine several aspects. I wrote a software where I have a very big um, a bank of samples uh, of all the instruments and all the extended techniques, and not MIDI sounds, but real um, recorded uh, single samples. So I can choose, choose from a very big library of sounds, um, which is shown here. And then I can place notes on a grid, like writing notes. Um, and I can listen to it. Or, um, of course, I can, the computer can produce its own algorithmic stuff. For instance, here, just a random scale and then I can edit it just subjectively, what I'm doing a lot, uh, that I first, the computer produces any, any stuff and then I uh, change things just uh, out of my taste. Um, or of course I can enter notes with, uh, with a MIDI keyboard or other devices of course. Um, or, to explain this here again with a, a very simple example with a small scale, 
and now I have different editing modules like um, um, changing, um, switching the pitch, uh, or um, or no, what's what's that? Um, mix uh, with a given probability, mix uh, some tones with each other, or stretch the hole with a given factor, or um, fill the gaps with new nodes that are derived from the already existing uh, parts, or um, shift the um, the point where where nodes occur occur by by chance with a given probability, or um, or sh shift the pitches with a given probability, or then erase some nodes, um, fill again uh, it with other nodes that are derived from the existing nodes. Um, then I remove the the pauses, or make a mirroring. I mirror it horizontally or vertically, and uh, or make a remix of uh, the whole. I divide it in some parts and make a remix out of it. Um, and so I can try out lots of things and just listen to it. What do I like? What I, what is not, of course, waste a lot of it. Um, but then, but some pearls come out. Um, and now imagine to apply this to things like this. Uh, this is uh, how a score looks like when I normally compose with this software. I call it COIT, calculated objects in time. Um, and now I. The software I'm developing since a couple of years, but it's only for me, um, not to, not f I do not publish it for others. It's that's too much work to open it. To, that's everybody can use it. Um, okay, or well here this is a, a score of a piece I wrote um, three years ago for Ensemble Modern. Um, the um, and here the, the all the objects are like notes, um, kind of space notation. Uh, the green um, objects, for example, these are strings. Here, this is uh, brass chord. These small notes are fast piano notes. Here, this stuff is um, is percussion, are percussion objects. And of course, I can export it then um, to Finale, for example. Here again, here are the piano notes. Here are the strings. Here is the woodwind chord. So. And this is how it sounds like when Ensemble Modern is playing it. But I completely composed it with uh, my software. Um, and the great thing is that I can ex experimentate um, day and night. Um, I don't need a studio, I don't need any musician, and I can really try out uh, things. But of course there's also other software. Not only this uh, nerdy stuff, but um, softs from the mass market, like Autotune. Um, you know what Autotune is, I guess? Um, yeah. Or um, speech synthesis uh, software, or um, uh, what's that? Or Songsmith yeah, from Microsoft, where you enter a melody and it generates uh, a arrangement. Um, or and so Songsmith is imitating um, existent and pop music styles, but also in the area of the classical music, more and more um, software comes. I found this uh, on the internet. Somebody made a software to imitate Avopad's music. Okay, now some examples um, of uh, the use of these kind of softwares. Um, for example, a nice uh, interpretation of 4 minutes 33 seconds of John Cage was done by Matthew Wright. He made the autotune version. He just recorded silence that does not exist. Um, there is always, always some noise in the air when you rec record it. And he put then autotune on it and made a tonal version of uh, 4 minutes 33 seconds.
Yeah. And then the second movement is in um, E, E flat major, uh, and the third in C major. Uh, or um, I used uh, Songsmith of Microsoft uh, in my piece Charts Music, where I applied um, data from the financial crisis um, into Songsmith. I um, made melodies out of the um, charts from stock exchange values, and then I entered this in Songsmith. So that's how financial crisis sounds like. I would, I would call this new music because no pop musician would do a, a, such a thing. Um, or I used a band in a box. This is pretty similar. In band in a box, you can also enter any sound, uh, an, an, any sound file, and it tries to detect harmonies, and then it creates an arrangement. And I fed it with uh, the second string quartet, string quartet of Brian Fernihow, and I think this, uh, the result really reveals something of Fernihow which uh, was not recognizable before. Or um, another example of the composer Alexander Strauch, who used uh, this software, Virtual Singer, um, just to use it expressively, which is also uh, a nice possibility. Last example, I used a speech synthesis software and I entered um, parts of Piero Lunaire by Arnold Schoenberg. You know this express expressionist piece uh, where there is not composed a singing voice but a, a speaking voice. Um, and I entered this in uh, Der Kranke Mond for, for flute and now not the, um, the a human speaker but the speech synthesis software which again i think reveals something um, something new du nicht dich tot das kranke mund dort auf des himmels schwarzem füllt dein blick so fiebernd über groß und mich wie fremde melodie am grund steht warum liebes leid stirbst du am sehnsucht tief erstickt du nicht dich tot das kranke mund dort auf des himmels schwarzem füllt den liebsten okay now the second point, availability of music. In 2004, I sat on my computer and I programmed on a sound wave, and then it came to my mind that, hey, I already have on my computer 250 gigabytes of sound waves. So I have almost the whole music history on my computer as MP3 files. Um, that's around uh, a couple of thousand hours of music nonstop in one box. So I asked myself, is it really can I make a new sound wave or is it not at least much more creative to use already the, the already existing stuff and, or is it really necessary to invent the wheel again? So I think it has become pretty seldom that you find really a new sound which is not already in this box. Um, so and. I think that's not only the single tones, so to say, the atoms of music, but also um, bigger parts. Uh, maybe you know these kind of cliches in contemporary music. 
Um, so I think everybody is quoting, and I think it's better to do it intentionally uh, instead of uh, naively. Um, and I would also say, for example, if you happen to need a orchestral noise field, well, then just take a page of Lachenmann and use it. Um, um, and most most composers, uh, I think, are composing at the wrong um, the wrong part. Um, I would say, he who writes for violin is copying. That's a fact. Or Picasso once said, I do steal, of course, when there is something to steal. Nowadays, I would say, yeah, I do compose, but only when there is something composed. But uh, the rest, I can steal. Or um, Matthew Schlomowitz, um, he works a lot with samples from um, from daily work, uh, and but he only um, uses examples from the internet. Of course, you could take this uh, device and record it, but hey, everything is already there on archives on the internet. So how does that sound? Uh, music with mu I call this approach music with music. How do I compose with this now? What I'm interested in is the working with ambivalences and competing um, competing objects uh, ob or objectivations. So I made a lot of experiments with um, edited sound files out of my box. Um, for example, with the duration. So in the beginning it was only a very small snip, so just a sound phenomenon, so to say. And the more I open the window, the more you recognize an existing uh, musical object from history. Um, and that's what I'm, I'm interested in on this uh, on this line, where the perception shifts between these different uh, ways of, of listening to it. And so I wrote uh, a couple of pieces for instruments, for live instruments, and uh, samples. Here a small um, example. <laughs> Okay, and so I worked with a lot of other editing techniques and applied this then in um, pieces for instruments and sampler. Um, one specific aspect about this kind of remixing is, uh, I think, the big quantities. Um, of course, remixing is not so such a fresh such a fresh thing, um, but the difference is um, 20 years ago the DJ had his two turntables and his, um, I think, 100 um, uh, records uh, with him. He could remix then in the night. Now you have, again, the small boxes with thousands or millions of uh, music pieces, uh, theoretically. So this is the information overload nowadays of the internet. Um, the same is with WikiLeaks. Um, there was uh, there was always diplomatic um, revelations, but it's a new situation when somebody has um, how many 251,287 diplomatic cables he um, publishes on the internet. So this new this quantity is a new quality. Um, some examples from arts. Um, Okay, it takes 27 minutes. Um, Victor Salomon um, took all the um, explicit um, parts from the series Sopra from the TV series Sopranos and uh, mashed up mashed it up together. Um, the, 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 the thing interested in, interesting is, I think, the this big quantity. Take time, um, watch it on the internet, 27 minutes. 
Or um, another interpretation of uh, 4 minutes 33 seconds. Dick White um, um, collected um, a lot of interpretations of this famous piece from YouTube and made a collage out of it. Of course, the video is exactly 4 minutes and 33 seconds long. Um, or um, Cory Archangel made his interpretation of Arnold Schoenberg's um, piano pieces, Opus 11, um, with um, samples from cats walking on pianos from YouTube. <laughs> Piece Untitled Performance Number One, where I um, have not a 12 tone series but a 9000 sample series that I'm typing on an ordinary computer keyboard just as an experience of a very big quantity. <laughs> Now this leads to a different question, the question of copyright. Um, a piece with 9,000 samples, if I would register this piece correctly at the GEMA, that's the German ASCAP, then I would have to fill in 9,000 of these register forms because it says, um, original title of folk tune or other works used must be listed here. The still widely believed notion that eight or four bars may be used without permission is incorrect. So that's obviously a um, rule from the analog times. Again, now we have our small boxes with millions of music pieces, and, um, and a, lot, a lot has changed over the last 10 years, I already said. And um, of course, this um, extremely feeds the mashup culture, and of course, I'm standing on this uh, point who really um, fights for, for the right to remix. Um, so I decided to, to make a performance piece. I, um, I composed an electronic music piece that contains 70,200 quotations in 33 seconds. That's the piece. <laughs> So as you could hear, it was not just a technical demonstration of the fact that, that you can compress so much music into 33 seconds. Again, I composed this uh, variety from the very, very small snips, uh, one after each other, until in the end there is a two second long quotation, which is obvious that it is a quotation. Well, and then I registered the piece. Am 12. September 2008 ist es soweit. Kreidler fährt mit einem Lastwagen voller Papier bei der GEMA-Generaldirektion in Berlin am Wittenbergplatz vor. 
Etwa 50 Personen erwarten ihn vor dem Gebäude. Journalisten von Zeitungen und Blogs, Radio und Fernsehen, Musiker, Creative Commons Aktivisten und Politiker der Grünen sowie der Piratenpartei. Musik ist keine Kunst mehr. Musik ist eine juristische Fachdisziplin. Aber ich mache aus dem Juristischen wieder Kunst. Das ist ein Musiktheaterstück. Das ist der erste Akt. Sie erleben die Aufführung einer von 500.000 Werkanmeldungen, die jährlich bei der GEMA eingehen. Wird dieses Stück legal sein oder illegal? Wird das vielleicht das illegalste Musikstück der Musikgeschichte sein? Darauf dürfen wir jetzt gespannt sein. Es muss natürlich im digitalen Zeitalter eine neue Möglichkeit gefunden werden, für die Verbreitung einerseits und für die Vergütung andererseits. Ich begrüße Sie von der GEMA. Ich bin selbst Mitglied von der GEMA, das würde ich sehr betonen. Ich wünsche mir sehr als Partner der GEMA, dass wir in diesen Zeiten Möglichkeiten finden, dass Künstler ihre Kunst verbreiten können, dass sie dafür vergütet werden. Und ich hoffe, wir kommen dann ins Gespräch. Oder wenn ich, das scheint mir so ein bisschen die Zielrichtung zu sagen, zu sein, ich glaube, geistiges Eigentum, ja, das ich ähm, äh, geistiges Eigentum ist wie materielles Eigentum. Es geht auch nicht um Pflaumen, sondern um ein Pflaumenkuchenrezept. Es geht um den konkreten Pflaumenkuchen. Die Pflaumen, die Pflaumen müssen kopiert werden. Pflaumen für alle. Also das ja. möchte ich, den möchte ich, den möchte ich sehen, der Pflaumen kopiert. Okay. Here the, the question was, um, who composed the music? The same was with my piece, Charts Music, where I said, I did not compose the piece, the bank managers composed the piece. I only made the arrangement. So that's uh, a continuation of the idea of sampling, is that you let others compose for you. And I followed this furthermore. In 2009, I got a commission from Klangwerkstatt Berlin for a new piece for, for instruments and electronics, and then I looked in the internet, I searched for a composer who writes um, commission works for you, and I found uh, in China, Chan and Chang, who uh, is a composer, but he offers his skills to compose for you. Normally he composes for weddings or funerals. I gave him several pieces of mine and said, please write me a new piece that sounds like my other pieces, for this new combination, for this new instrumentation. Um, and furthermore, I looked uh, in India, I searched for a cheap programmer, who, uh, and I found Ramesh Murabai. I gave him the same pieces, and I asked him to write a software where I can algorithmically also produce music that sounds like other pieces of mine. Um, and um, because both are living in uh, countries where the wages are low. It was very cheap for me. I received uh, music from them for about $150, whereas I received 1,500 euros for this commission. So I, um, um, I how do you say, I switched the production in, other co in another country, the same what uh, other industries do as well. And again, the question here is, who composed the music then? Somehow it, the results sounded a bit like my music, but of course there were some other more or less strange influences in it. Um, here is a part from the documentation. Jetzt um, gibt es noch andere Möglichkeiten, um, Lagiate zu machen. Ich wollte das auch um, nicht nur von Hand, sondern auch maschinell uh, was erstellen, also mit künstlicher Intelligenz. Und habe eine Ausschreibung gemacht in Indien, für einen billigen Programmierer, da hat mir das Auswärtige Amt geholfen und ähm, habe also gewissermaßen einen kleinen Kompositionswettbewerb da ausgerichtet, weil es musste ein Programmierer sein, der auch mit, äh, mit Musik äh, vertraut ist. Und da habe ich dann den Programmierer äh, Ramesh Dungabai ausgewählt, der hervorragende Referenzen hat. Denn sind dieselben Stücke, die Chang vorbekommen hat, habe ich auch Dungabai gegeben. Und er hat daraus äh, aus den Daten ein Programm gemacht. Das hat mich nur 15 Dollar gekostet. 
Übrigens bekomme ich von der GEMA 1500 äh, Euro dafür. Nur aber er hat mir ausgerechnet, dass meine Musik klanglich zu 25% aus Samples besteht, davon ca. 70% Popmusik, 20% Sprache und 10% Klassik. Insgesamt also 25% anteilig Samples und 75% Instrumentalklänge. Davon 53% Punktualismus und 23% Linearität. Der Rest ist undefinierbar. Mittlere Lautstärken machen ca. 46% aus, laute Stellen 39% und leise 15%. Es gibt mindestens 30 verschiedene Klangfarben. Und jedes Stück hat im Schnitt aber noch ca. 35% Eigenständigkeit, was dann im Zufallsgenerator das machen muss. Und ein solches Stück hat er jetzt also aus den gegebenen Daten generieren lassen. To the next point, control devices. Um, of, of course, there is uh, since um, 30 years we have MIDI devices, MIDI keyboards, MIDI drum sets, and this stuff. But uh, again, over the last 10 years, uh, some new devices um, came. Uh, additionally to it, uh, we have complex joysticks, um, or we have the Wii, or the Kinect, or the Arduino boards, where you can design your own uh, stuff with sensors. Um, I've collected some videos, uh, some nice in in videos that um, demonstrate some new devices. For example, this performance. Here some guys um, show how to use the Kinect as a keyboard anywhere. Hartman uh, just applied the data of people passing by on the sound synthesis software. All these guys um, made all, almost the same with um, riding a, or, or, uh, driving the car through such an area. 
These looping musical phrases are represented on the map as overlapping circular territories. As the vehicle approaches the center of a circle, the volume increases. In areas of the map where territories overlap, the vehicle generates dynamic mixes of the overlapping musical phrases. Okay, so this explain, explained that there are different territories where map, when the car is driving over it, the GPS the sensor recognizes it and different musical activities the are then triggered data. on this Maximus P patch the and then they are driving just through, through the desert. Uh, in this video you, you don't really get a sound uh, example. Train or automobile. In this footage, the map is explored. Okay, just to, just to show some techniques that are available now. Um, what, what disturbs me is that um, it is uh, more a technical demonstration than an artistic use, uh, in my opinion. Or the other problem is that um, I, I really have a big hope that new musical instruments come, come up with these uh, technologies. But at the moment, when you see this uh, Japanese guy making his movements, it really looks very beautiful. Um, and it's musically interesting, but you look at it like uh, somebody from, from, um, from outer space comes to the earth and he sees somebody playing the cello. Yeah? And then, whoa, what is he doing there? And I hope that there comes the day where we look at these people playing such instruments um, like we're looking on people playing the, the cello. Or, on the other hand, um, using such a, such a setup where the data from people walking on the streets are used as instrument data, um, then do not go just on any street. Go on a street where there is a demonstration or go on a street where there is um, prostitution um, to use it with, um, to, to give it some more semantic aspects with it. Um, and then um, I wait for the day where there are institutes that educate performers uh, to play these instruments. Like, well, we had the cembalo, or the clavichord, then we had the piano, now we have uh, p um, um, keyboard modules, and I hope there will be one time in music universities uh, they will teach people to play sensors. Um, I um, made a couple of pieces uh, in the area of instrument design, for example, a uh, piece with three programmed joysticks. <laughs> or um, the PS5 pro programmings of a MIDI keyboard, where I have a MIDI keyboard and I'm playing on it um, pieces of the um, piano literature. But of course, on the MIDI keyboard, you're only producing data. And when you press the key, how uh, intense you press the key, uh, how long uh, you hold the key, and so on and so forth. And on the computer, I'm using this data to generate then other results. For example, I'm playing the Träumerei by Schumann, but I'm interpolating um, all, uh, all keys with Glissandi. <laughs> Or um, the last of these uh, five programmings is uh, a piece where I programmed it in a way that the tone does not come when you press the key, but when you release the key, which is really a um, pain in the ass. Uh, it's, it's completely against your feeling you learned for uh, your whole life of playing the keyboard. I, I g g gave it to, to professional pianists and they... Whoop, they became, uh, they got gray hair out of it. I trained it very hard and I played a uh, fugue by Bach on it. Um, I really play it, I think I play it rhythmically correctly, but the result is a very deconstructed fugue. <laughs>
Untitled Performance Number 3, again, I have an ordinary computer keyboard, and the members of Ensemble Mosaic are um, interpreting, uh, interpreting differently a given series of piano samples in this case. <laughs> Okay, now the last point is the platforms, new platforms and um, social networks. Um, there is a simple calculation. In concert halls you have between 50 and 500 seats normally. On the internet you have nowadays around 2 billion users. So in other words, make art and paste, post it on Facebook. Um, for example, This is from Piano Plus Festival last year in the Kubus of ZKM, a piece by Christoph Ogiermann. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't come to it. I'm living in Berlin. Um, normally, I'm not in Karlsruhe. So I'm very happy that there was some guy um, recording it on video. Even though it is pretty a, a bad quality of documentation, it's better than nothing. Um, and the same is that now I can um, watch experimental theater from um, Los Angeles and strange performance stuff or, um, or experimental films from, from somewhere from Russia, um, which 20 years ago it would have been just impossible to, to get these, uh, these things. Um, and um, so I think it's um, I, and so you can nowadays you can see it on on the social networks or on on the blogs and um, every morning I am reading through the half of the internet I, every morning I have my own arts festival um, and um, I think more and more um, it comes into the minds that it's good to make documentations uh, somehow and make pieces that are possible for, for documentation. The philosopher Harry Lehmann uh, made the, um, the term, they are vertigenic, like photogenic, um, a face is photogenic when it's, um, it's good to, uh, it looks good on photographs, so nowadays um, art pieces should be vertigenic, they should be somehow good looking on the internet, if you're interested in somehow distributing it. Of course the concert hall still has its own qualities and you cannot document, uh, documentate everything that's clear. Okay, but there is, um, there are new, um, there is a lot of differentiation. Um, um, some institutes um, lose some, some power, of course, but there's on the other hand new accumulation. There are new institutions, new blogs, net radios, network channels. Um, I want to show just uh, some examples of my daily internet festival, for example, ubu.com or um, SF Sound, a, um, a internet radio station from some guys in San Francisco. Um, the Degen Web Radio, which is in cooperation with the ZKM, makes a beautiful program of electronic music. Um, on YouTube, there's, for example, the, the channel of someone of the channel called Staczynski, where there are hundreds of new music pieces. In Germany, there's a bad block of music about um, new music in Germany. Kultur Techno is my blog. Triangulation, Creative Music, Vibrock, Piedmontrian. 
10 examples out of hundreds and thousands, of course. Um, a disadvantage of this kind of looking on arts is, of course, uh, or more and more people say to me, ah, I don't come to the concert, just put it on the internet. Um, that's, that's a fact. Okay, so I come to the end. Um, I mentioned four points of new technology. And then I showed a lot of examples, what kinds of, uh, of art pieces come, come out of this. So, but what are the aesthetic consequences? Um, I try to, to describe it a bit. Of course, there's no dogma at all, um, just some tendencies um, I am uh, regarding. So, one point is working with mass media, pop culture, material becomes now in music, this is not uh, in other arts, it is an older thing, but now in music, it's more and more in new classical, new music, it's um, more and more, I think, um, people include these things because it's techni technologically so easy. Or the use of the big quantities uh, using today's power and capacity of computers, the sampling, the reenactment of um, existing um, music pieces um, due to the presence of all these historical artifacts in the archives. Um, performance in multimedia become more interesting. Um, it's um, the music college this Rhein and Onman described it as the iconic turn of music. Um, that, of course, on the computer you do not only have sounds, but also um, the visuals. And, um, and on YouTube you have all the stuff, even though if it's only music, people upload it uh, mostly on YouTube. Um, and the uh, being reproducible for the internet becomes more important. Um, and of course, somehow this will shape the artwork then. Um, I think uh, maybe they become more conceptual and more iconic. Um, and so more and more new music and media art meld together. Um, and more and more, the more there are new instruments, there are um, uh, pieces on the internet and there are the blogs and networks who distribute it, the more this um, kind of new music that is for cello and violin and uh, harp becomes old-fashioned. Well, some statements might have been provocant, at least uh, for some from the older generation. It is provocant. Um, Klaus Steffen Mahnkopf last year published an article against Harry Lehmann and me um, about, um, oh, you're, you're, you're believing too much in, in this new technology. And um, then a whole book was published in summer about uh, music, aesthetics, and digitalization, a controversy. And the controversy is still going on because everything about this is uh, going on. Um, Mankov said in, we also had a radio talk um, in January, and in the end Mankov said um, he, he differentiates between five, ty five five guys um, towards the, the digitalization. There are the, those who refuse it, those who are skeptic, those who are pragmatic, those who are euphoric, and those who are fanatic. Um, he said, uh, I'm, I'm just a pra pragmatic. I would say, um, we are artists, don't be just pragmatic, be euphoric. Thank you.